a thief, a gambler, a drunk. This is who Saul de la Sio was, a man who gambled himself into debt and found the best way to relieve that debt to be stealing from others. Eventually caught, Saul was exiled from Crida, blindfolded and escorted for three full weeks deep into the wilderness. Saul was left to fend for himself. Wandering for days, broken, starved. Saul stumbled upon what he thought was an illusion. Massive white and golden towers reached high into the sky connected to a large sprawling city deep within the wilderness. At the entrance to the city appeared a group of mysterious beings. They held great tall postures and floated just above the ground. They wore elegant golden armor, had elongated toes, and possessed intimidating masks. The Mersat. The Char invasion shook the very foundations of humanity. Each human kingdom reacted to the invasion in their own way, be it Ascalon who uh, basically decided to annihilate all of their people, or Or who also basically decided to annihilate all of their people. But Crida had a different plan. Saw D'Alessio, who was once exiled, returned to a Crida whose king had abandoned them and became a shepherd for the Mersat, for the Unseen Ones. He preached for the power of his newfound gods and gathered flocks of Crydons to follow in his steps. Building a new army, a new organization, the White Mantle, Saul was able to organize the Crichton people and strike back against the Char. The Unseen Ones appeared in battle against the Char and decimated the invading forces, saving Crida. In the wake of the battle, the Unseen Ones turned towards the squad of White Mantle and murdered most of them, sparing only the most zealous of the White Mantle and Saul. In this moment, Saul realized what he had done, that he had not saved Crida from a force who would slaughter and enslave them. He handed Crida over to an even more powerful force. The Mursat recognized Saul's realization and took him, dragging him back north into the wilderness, where he disappeared from Crida and the people's view. The new white mantle leadership lied that Saul had died in the battle against the Char, made Saul a martyr, and continued on with the events that would transpire throughout history. But in reality, Saul was gone, kidnapped, and never to be seen again. At least for a very, very long time. In the wake of the Bloodstone's explosion, Scholar Glinda discovered a strange portal that had appeared in Bloodstone Fen. Remembering the group of adventurers who had assisted her in the rescue mission turned full on assault in the Forsaken Thicket, Glinda called upon them to investigate this mysterious portal. Upon entering through the portal, the group looked at their surroundings, a cavern with lush foliage falling down the cliff faces and a heavy waterfall in the distance. The adventurers were able to discern that they are deep in the woodland cascades, an expansive forest that covered much of the land north of Crida. Nearby, Glynna stood awaiting the adventurers. There you are! Now that you're here, we can explore this place. I see someone's a bit impatient. You think there's something important here? Isn't it obvious? I make a discovery, I'm gonna investigate the heck out of it. And wait till you see what I found. Where exactly are we? Good question. I don't know, but the answer is most certainly around us somewhere. Who built that portal? You mean the one that brought us here? Think about where it was located in Bloodstone Fen. Before it blew up, I mean. Maybe the Mersat or White Mantle used it to travel here. I'm not sure why, though. I don't know exactly where here is just yet. All the more reason to press onward. Good attitude! The group informed Glinda that they were ready, and made their way through the canyon. As they passed through the waterfall, the group noted that they felt different, to which Glinda promptly turned into an orb of celestial energy for a short time and dashed far forward, dashing into a large cavern that seemed to be disconnecting from reality itself, with tears in the ceiling and walls that seemed to peer out into celestial existence. Four large chains connected the ceiling to a large floating platform. Above the platform floated a pyramidal-shaped object that glowed a somber green with some sort of eye in the center. Below the object, a jade construct materialized on the platform. These jade constructs had once been servants for the Mersat. Adventurers who fought against the Mersat centuries ago had taken care of hundreds of these beings. The group of adventurers here had also taken care of their fair share back in Bloodstone Fen, but this one was different. Stronger. It lashed out with plentiful attacks and seemed to destabilize the cavern itself opening tears in reality and unleashing large magical attacks against the group. Though the fight was difficult, this jade construct, named Cairn the Indomitable, fell. In the wake of the construct's defeat, the mysterious object floating above the platform began to shake and then vanished. 
As it did, the haze surrounding the platform dissipated, allowing the group to push further into the complex. As the group did, they ran up a steep hill and came across the entrance to a large structure that was built into the side of the cavern. Some sort of demonic shaped head laid affixed to the top of the dark metal gate, a ruined path of harsh dirt and stone surrounded by crumbling walls and metal bars. Further in, rats scurry away from the adventures and several corpses laid around hallways. Some of the corpses were pinned into the ground and walls with large spears. The corpses were of a variety of different races, including humans and Eddins. Dark metal gates and walls lay strewn around the area with alcoves built in throughout. This area was a prison. An opening to the next area was barricaded by a pile of rubble. Further down the hallway lay a long, winding tunnel with more corpses, some of whom held shovels. Whoever these prisoners were, they appeared to have tried to make an escape by digging out, but did not make it far. Some members of the squad picked up the shovels and ran back to dig away at the pile of rubble. Meanwhile, Glenna discussed this place. I want to know more about that thing we're chasing. I have a theory, but it's controversial. If I could only get closer... What do you think it is? It's the Eye of Jamthir. I've seen drawings of it at the Priory, but don't think anyone's actually seen it in centuries. Not much is known about it, though some believe it has connections to the Mursat. Long ago, the White Mantle used it to identify humans of extraordinary magical aptitude whom they deemed the Chosen. This title wasn't as illustrious as it sounded. Chosen were rounded up, hauled away, and sacrificed on a bloodstone. By most accounts, the Eye hasn't been seen since 1072 or so. No one can agree on what became of it. Some hypothesize that it was lost during a skirmish between White Mantle and Shining Blade forces. Others think it retreated to the Isle of Jamthir, or maybe to wherever the Mursat came from. Nobody knows, except us, because we just found it. The more we learn about it, the better. The Eye of Janthir, an ancient artifact that the Mursad and White Mantle used to select humans for sacrifice, which then eventually disappeared for years, until now. As the group came through the now cleared rubble, some sort of large game board covered the entire area. Several smaller jade statuettes formed a line in the far end of the board. In the center, a giant statue of a Mursat, and above it, the eye. As the squad tampered with the board, they activated the game and began fighting the statue and various statuettes. Spikes came shooting out of the holes in the tiles, instantly impaling anyone standing on them. The smaller jade constructs made their way across the game board, activating tiles they came across to deal extreme anguish to the squad, and eventually activating into stronger pieces themselves once they reached the other side. This was some sort of cruel game that prisoners were forced into an attempt at unlikely survival while suffering extreme agony. Fortunately for the squad of adventurers, they were armed and not chained. And so, they could beat this game and continue forward. As the pieces crumbled, the eye moved again. As the squad pressed on, they came across another door with the same demonic head placed above. This time, the door was locked requiring the group to complete a puzzle around the area or utilize the skills and knowledge of a thief in order to open the door. As the door opened, the group was met by a horrifying sight. As the beast growls, the group must push through the door and charge and face this mysterious creature. An entity that none of the adventurers nor Glenna have ever seen before. A four-legged monster with sharp claws and two arms holding ginormous spears. Sharp teeth and horns affixed to its deformed head. A head that shares the same resemblance to the doors experienced before. Floating above the head, just like in the first two encounters, the eye watched. Fighting this monster was not the easiest experience of any of the squad members' lives. This monster, Samurog, fought with ferocity and devastating strength, charging across the room attempting to knock back anyone into the Ring of Spikes, impaling them and killing them instantly. 
Through pure muscle, Samrock swung his two spears into the group and slammed them into the ground, all while spears flew into the arena. Occasionally, Samrog would attempt to devour his target, requiring the group to desperately attempt to rip Samrog off of their friend. Throughout the fight, Samrog would retreat to an alcove in the wall and unleash two prisoners upon the group, a Jotun named Godum and a human named Rigim. Their life forces were directly connected to the monster, and the group had to fight and defeat the prisoners in order to drive Samrog out of his alcove. After doing so multiple times, the group is able to put the two prisoners to rest and defeat Samrog, forcing him to collapse to the floor, dead. As Samrog falls, a voice yells out from the area ahead. Have you come to crawl inside my head? Join the others? There's no more room. As the eye teleports, the group glides towards a large open platform above an area of deep fog. Leave now, or you'll make him angry. Around the platform lay four statues that looked like humanoid gargoyles holding four chains connected to a pillory of stone and candles. Locked in the pillory lay a frail man with long white hair and ragged clothes. Above, the eye. As the group approaches the center of the platform, chaos ensues. What are you doing? You'll let him out! I has chosen its sacrifice. Spirits of pride and greed materialize on the platform and begin to walk towards the shackled prisoner, seemingly to cause him pain. An unknown force screams out and teleports the group to a mysterious realm. Similar to the original platform, this new platform holds four statues holding chains surrounded by large black and red spikes that match the floor. The surrounding environment is dark, cloudy, and otherworldly. In the center of the platform, instead of the shackled prisoner, is a dark shadow of some sort of demonic looking monster. As the group destroys the statues in the demonic realm, the bonds connected to the prisoner in the overworld begin to break as well, releasing the prisoner. As the last bond breaks, a loud roar can be heard outside of the arena. demon seen earlier through the shadows leaps into the arena and smashes into the ground. The shackled prisoner and the demon Demos yell at each other. You will never leave this place, Delicio. Not until you obey. Saw Delicio. The man who sold out his country to the Mursat over 250 years ago was alive here. The group, now aided by Saw, fought against the demon, a large, fleshy creature with large horns, arms with hands protruding from its skin, reaching out towards the group and also grasping at the demon itself. Demos wielded two large flails that he used to swing at the group and slam into the ground to send out devastating shockwaves. Hands arose around the room, attempting to drag any adventurer who steps into them to their death. As the group and demon fight, Demos begins to cast the group back into the demonic realm while some adventurers stay up to fight. In the shadowy realm, a visage of Saul dressed in his white mantle guard begins to attack the group. An echo of Saul's history of thievery, this echo attacks the group and attempts to steal boons from the squad. As the group weakens the echo, they are returned to the overworld. I was, I was desperate and turned, and turned to thievery to pay my creditors. But I could not outrun my guilt. I was caught for my crimes and exile. I was left for dead until the Mursat found me. Demonic tears begin to appear around the platform, shooting out devastating missiles to the group. Periodically throughout the fight, Demos attempts to crush the minds of everyone on the platform, forcing the group to seek refuge with Saul in the center. Eventually, Demos casts part of the group back down into the demonic realm where they must face another visage of Saul. This time, an echo of Saul's history of gambling. This echo summons three clones of itself, which the group must find the correct one wielding an elegant staff with a white mantle, instead of three cruder staves. As the echo weakens, the group is again teleported back up to the overworld. I gambled away everything I had, and then Stand some. in the ward! Quickly! But they came to collect on my debts. Each time the group returns to the overworld, the hands around the arena begin to clamber towards Demos, empowering the demon if they are able to reach it. Demos occasionally begins to decompose sections of the arena, 
consuming the life of those standing in it as well as expanding if someone is indeed standing in it. Eventually, part of the group is yet again sent down into the Shadow Realm to face one of the visages of Saul, this time facing an echo of Saul's history of being a drunkard. This echo attempts to teleport the members around while striking at them. As the echo weakens, the group is teleported back to the main platform yet again. I was a slave to the bottle. I lost, I lost, I lost everyone I'd held dear. This demon was tormenting Saul, reminding him of his past and how he betrayed everyone, those he held dear, and eventually his entire nation. Each echo reminded Saul of his failures in life, how he himself was a complete failure. This demon, an agent of the unseen, was a manifestation of Saul's failures, of his decrepit life, bound to Saul to torment him. As the group fought against Demos and began to weaken the demon, it yelled out, You will die where you will be to Saul. Your soul will never rest. Your name will forever be poison on the lips of your people. You have no power over me! <laughs> this time, the entire group was teleported into the demonic realm. With Saul by their side, Demos appeared rising up from the void. Larger than a building, 20 times its size in the overworld, the demon lumbered above the group and began to attack the squad on the platform. Though eventually, Demos was defeated and fell back into oblivion, and the group was returned to the overworld. Saw D'Alessio laid on the ground and spoke to the group. It's all my fault. The Morsat betrayed us and murdered my men and then dragged me to this terrible place. I've been trapped here, tormented by my own demons, paralyzed by the shame of selling out my people. The Eye kept me alive and used my guilt to try to break me down, force me to be the Mersat's puppet. Now, I'm free. After centuries of imprisonment and torture, Saul can finally rest. I'd always considered the founder of the White Mantle as some kind of monster. Now I know he was just a flawed person, tortured by his guilt and haunted by his mistakes. That man suffered for more than 200 years in this cesspit. Nobody deserves that. We have a saying in the Priory. History is like a pair of dice. Many-sided and loaded with chance. Every story has multiple angles. Most of us just accept what we're taught, but that can be dangerous. But let's be honest, Saul was no paragon. Let's just say the man had issues before his Mersat betrayal. But to your point, it seems clear that he tried to reform himself and help his people drive out the Char invasion. The Mantles started off as a protective militia, but once the Mersat took over, they became oppressors. <laughs> Regardless, if Saul is to be believed, the white mantle he founded was very different from what it became. At least now, Mr. D'Alessio is free. May he find comfort in the afterlife. See to it that Saul's body is interred on Crichton soil. Don't bother notifying the Seraph. That would complicate matters. I'd imagine the Queen's people would rather see his corpse destroyed, or have it displayed as a trophy. I sincerely doubt they'd be interested in learning about the man. That would just complicate their narrative. I see you've taken up politics. Nasty business, isn't it? And considering the current dysfunction of the White Mantle, we shouldn't talk to them either. I'll treat this as a priory matter of the highest secrecy then. Glad to know we're on the same wavelength. I'll see to it that his remains are handled respectfully, though it may take some time. So, about the Eye of Janthea. A truly awful and cruel discovery, but an important one nonetheless. We still don't know its origins, only that it's somehow involved with the Mersat. Do they come from the same place? 
But at least we know a bit about its role here. It sustained Saul's life and those of the other prisoners. It peered into their minds, used their weaknesses and regrets to break them down. In short, it's nasty. But by killing its guards, you forced it to retreat. Somewhere. But without the aid of its life-sustaining powers, Saul's body quickly deteriorated. I would like to know more about the Eye, but I fear it's gone for good. A shame, really. Now that the miasma has lifted, we should be able to explore the floor below. Considering what we've already experienced, I'm hesitant to venture much further. Before he passed, Saul spoke of the mental and physical tortures he endured. They wanted to break him down. Makes sense, since the Mursat would have had an easier time steering the mantle with its founder at the helm. Ironic that they left him here while they went off to meddle with human affairs only to be largely killed off. Even if he'd broken down and become their slave, the Mursat would have never returned to retrieve him. So he waited here, unaware that he'd never be freed. I wonder if he even knew how much time had passed. But, I would imagine that there are still secrets to uncover, facts to find, etc. After the squad and Glenn have finished their discussion, they begin to look around the entire prison complex. Several large areas can be explored. Prominently in the northern area is a large torture room with a variety of devices, a location where the Mursad were able to take their various prisoners to break their bodies and their minds. Across the complex, the squad finds various objects and notes that help them learn more about this place. The entire complex, up until just a few moments ago, was a large prison complex where the Mursat brought various slaves and imprisoned creatures. The Mursat cared not for the health of most of the prisoners, where many died from malnourishment or laid impaled throughout the complex. Many of the prisoners began a movement to attempt to escape from the prison by digging their way out, but they did not make it far. Prior to the Mursat leaving for Krita and eventually never returning to this prison, they had selected one of the most exceptional prisoners to be the warden of the other prisoners, Samarog, to which when the other prisoners attempted to escape, he took his job to heart and slaughtered them all. This bastion was a cruel and twisted place commissioned by the Mursat themselves, a location of innumerable pain and suffering as hundreds, maybe thousands, were tortured and killed. With the Mursat never returning, most of the prisoners were left to die, many by the spears of Samarog. While the remaining few prisoners, including Saw de la Ciel himself, were left to be tortured for eternity, until the squad came across them and released them from their suffering. Across the large courtyard housing Saw's prison, on the southern side laid several tunnels that lead back into the earlier paths of the prison complex. Partway through one tunnel, a second tunnel branches off. As the squad begins to run through the tunnel, they are suddenly teleported into a large dark room. Suddenly, Several voices of Saul's memories begin to scream through the heads of the squad members. Feels, feels like an Etten sat on it. Hold on. Hold, on. Hold on, everyone. I think we got a camel in disguise over here. My, de my, de my definition of a drinking problem. Last, last, last call. You keep putting that liver of yours on trial, it'll jump on the bar and ask for leniency. Bartender, bartender. bartender. Uncork. uncork that bottle keep it, keep and keep it, it flowing. As long as, as, long as, as long as you've got coin, I'll keep that cup full. What do you, what do you, what do you say? You, you, you me, and this, and this bottle get a room for the night. Man down! We got a man down over here. Oh, oh, oh. Don't, get don't, don't get up. <clears throat> I'm, fine. I'm, I'm fine. Empty your, empty your, empty your pockets into the bag. That's right. That's right. Every, everything. What's going on, going What's going on? on here? Just, just, just 
Save the sob story and hand over the gold. All right. You're, ma you're, ma you're making a big mistake. Keep, a, keep, keep a, a silver so you don't go hungry. Now get, out. Now get out of here. Go on. Go. Why are you, why are why are you doing this? Take off, take off. Take off all your jewelry. Give it here. Give it, Give it here. here. This, this, this is all we have. Someone, Someone help. Nobody, nobody. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Just, just give me your coin and you can go. Leave, leave, leave the children alone. Here, take everything we have. Forget, forget, forget you've ever seen this face. Help us, help, help us. us anyone. We're being robbed! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... Look. Look, I need to pay them. Or they'll kill me. Understand? Understand. Don't, hurt Don't, Don't hurt us! I'll see your two silver. And raise, and raise you three gold. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. What, have what have you got up those sleeves? Pleasure, pleasure. pleasure doing business with you. What? what? How could you? Show me, show me. Show me your cards. Balthasar's backside. I won again. Don't make, don't don't make bets. You can't pay off. You're a liar, You're a liar and a cheater. Come on, you can trust me. Does this, Does this look like the face of a liar? Damn, damn. Damn, Saul. You keep losing like this and your grandkids will be paying off your debts. What? 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 That's impossible. Three in a row? No way I'm quitting now. Pay up, pay up. Pay up, Delessio. You lost fairly. Come on, at least, at least leave me with a little something to get home. Your, word, your, word. your word's not good around here anymore. Roll, roll. roll the dice. They're all, they're, all, they're all tapped out, friend. God, God. God. Okay, okay, okay. One more round. One more, One more round. round. Come on. Come on. We don't, allow, we, don't we don't allow poppers in this game, Telesio. Get, your, Get ass. your ass out of here. You lying cheater. I, I, I saw what you did. Hand over, hand, over. hand over the gold unless you want a beating. You want, you want the shirt off my back, too? Every day, every, every day you're late with payment, I'll break a finger. Run out of fingers, I'll snap your neck. For it's a no best friend. What, 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 what have I done? Hey pal. Hey pal. Hey pal. I think you've had enough. I never meant to see if this so being so again pays you three gold. to be free. Hold on, hold on. Empty your pockets into the bag. Hey, That's right. You were buying for every generation. What's going on here? That feels like a pleasure to pass on this happily on. What? Just how could Save you? Save the sob story. Hold on, everyone. I think we got a camel on the shoulders of the Mercedes. You're making a big mistake. We must rally against the problem. I won again. Worse, last.